Sie zu bitten. Vielen Dank. Die Helden den Rest. Kittens should really be very flattered. These clubs have boosted their image enormously. They provide a home away from home where young men can study form. And where older men can respectably let down what is left of their hair. Even starchy old fire eaters like William Fenton of British intelligence. Berman, Sam again. Give him a hand. by Simon Templer. Contact Herr Grutz of your special branch and tell him that William Fenton of British Intelligence wants him here right away. Before that, Fenton. Now then, I'm not playing around. Who's doing this and why? I'll use this on their shoulder. I'm not in the least squeamish. Please. A man offers a job. I, I take it. What man? Uh, a man in a bar. <laughs> Your lot have killed 13 Russian intelligence agents in the last four months. You're trained assassins, not casual labor. Would you mind, please, Simon? <laughs> Russian standard equipment. Where did you get it? The man. He says when I finish the job, I, I report to him. Well, then report. Tell him I'm dead. Go on. Q5, Q5 to zero. Come in, please. Q5, Q5 to zero. Come in, please. Just my luck. To say nothing of his. Oh, well, at least I've actually seen it happen. No, we're all right. Shut the door. Now, this is part of a death campaign, the organized assassination of intelligence agents. By radio? 
by explosive-filled gadgets in general, all Russian make. Yes, but you said 13 Russian agents had died. They're knocking off their own men. That thing didn't explode by itself. It had to be triggered, an impulse beamed from outside. How far outside? Well, I'd say about a thousand yards. Yes, well, I'd say a lot closer by somebody who knew the party boy was in our hands. The bartender. <laughs> Barman, where is he? He left just a moment ago. What's his name? Klaus. Hans Klaus. Hmm. Put out a call for him. All stations. The club will have his address. He has to be found. Yeah, I've And when Herr Gratz arrives, tell him where to Professor Muller's laboratory. Come on, Simon. Yeah. So, you actually saw it explode. <laughs> well, well, our theories are becoming facts. But we too have not been idle. We have managed to reconstruct some of the devices used in the other killings. Well, show us. A little miracle. It will light cigarettes. <laughs> it will take pictures. Ten of them. But on the tenth picture, boom. And the man using it is blown to bits. Very neat. <laughs> A micro explosive. Very small, very powerful. You have seen one of these, Mr. Templer? Yes, and I'd rather not handle it. <laughs> very sensible. Wearing this ring, I may handle it quite freely. It neutralizes the proximity fuse in the lock. Without the ring, the heat of my hand activates the fuse and it explodes. Yes, but uh, old hat, surely. <laughs> but our assassins have introduced a modification. I will demonstrate. Get it. If you please. Ordinarily, the proximity of the ring to the fuse neutralizes it. But with a small transmitter, somewhere close, a street or two away, they can direct an impulse that will neutralize the neutralizing effect of the ring. Now, let's uh, get this straight. Russian secret agents are being killed by their own gadgets. Right. But they're claiming we're responsible. You sure we aren't? <laughs> My dear fellow, we kill their agents, they kill ours. Never happens. Herr Fenton, the uh, miniaturization is actually too fine to be Russian. Oh, well, then who's making the gadgets? We are not sure. Well, we'd better find out. Moscow's planning a revenge campaign. The head of their secret police is traveling south at this minute. Oh, not the mysterious Colonel Smolenko. Mm -hmm. He's arriving in West Berlin tonight and catching the midnight train to Paris. You know what I smell? Chop suey. Uh, please? Or what would suit them better than to have us and the Russians slitting each other's throats? Uh, you make sense, Mr. Templer. Mr. Yeah. Herr Graz. Oh, thank you. Fenton. I see. All right, we'll keep at it. He has to be found. Right. They traced Klaus, our barman friend, as far as the railway station and then lost him. Station? Smolenko. And Klaus is a professional killer. You'd better get on to the police, tell them to warn Smolenko. No, but nobody's ever seen him. He's never left Russia in his life and he'll be using another name. Mm -hmm. Makes life difficult. And you're the only one of us who's seen Klaus. Simon, you've got ten minutes to catch the Berlin Paris Express.
Excuse me. Reserved. You cannot read? Cannot read what? Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but Section 4, Paragraph 22 of the Rower's Regulations stipulates that a reserved compartment must have a label. No label, no reservation. It does not matter. He may stay. That orders were to... He may stay. You heard what the lady said. Wanted a cigarette? Why didn't you ask? Will you? Do you mind if I do? Order some tea. Oh, make it four. I'll pay for my own. Yes, uh, um, the official recommendation, one mark. Search him, go away. Quick, search him. All right, where's the rest of it? Where's the rest of it? I said, who are you working for? You like the boys to work you over? There are no men in Paris! What man? I don't know. I never saw him. He gave me his order by telephone. What were the orders? To, to, to catch his train and, and kill uh, occupants in this compartment. So why do you have to be so trigger-happy? He could have led us to the ringleaders of the whole plot. What plot? Those agents of yours that have been killed. Colonel Smolenko, every moment you are in Paris, your life will be in grave danger. Smolenko, how you know this? You two are a spy. Get me a puff or I'll break his back. Enough, Igor. All right. Start at the beginning, Mr. Templar. So you recognize me? The moment you entered this compartment. I have a photographic memory. And in the Kremlin, there are many files. Well, it's uh, nice to be known and loved the world over. Known, perhaps. Now, explain to me, please. So you see, these people, somehow or other, have managed to gain control of the production of your miniaturized equipment. Where'd you get it, by the way? It is purchased in Western Europe by our Paris organization, which is absolutely trustworthy. Hmm. You are lying. I'm trying to think why. Just trying to help? Well, if you want to get yourself blown into pretty little pieces, don't blame me. No, we will blame you. No one in Paris knows Coronel Smolenko. Not even what she looks like. Or even that she is a woman. So you say Colonel Smolenko will be killed? I do indeed. Well, we shall see. In the morning when we reach Paris... Yes? We trade places. I will become your secretary. And you... You will become Colonel Smolenko.
Give you a place, Colonel. Take your time, boys. From now on, practically anything you touch goes off bang. Your first time in Paris? Yes. So you'll be wanting to buy some clothes. Why? Well, every woman who comes to Paris. Clothes I regard as a necessary covering to maintain body temperature. Which is about all one can say for the coat you have on. Sure. Not a nature lover. He is trained to mistrust all manifestations of bourgeois sentimentality. And uh, sentiment has no place in your life. It clouds the judgment. I'm uh, sorry, God. No, no. All clear, Colonel. Good. Ah, the champagne. Champagne? I ordered it on the way up. Please. Just a moment. Open it. Open it. You taste it. Me, monsieur? You, monsieur. <coughs> All of it. You may go. Yes, monsieur. This is... Uh... Very generous of you. Oh, not at all. I'm not paying for it. Then who will? The Kremlin, of course. We are on an expense account. Your file was right. You're nothing but an adventurer. Well, while you're worrying about a few rubles, some very nasty wheels are turning in this city. Klaus was hired here by a man who knew your train compartment number. So I suggest you make a list of all the people who are in the know. And remember, they'll try again. Only I shall be on the receiving end. Success and a long life, particularly mine. Estrovia. Another bill for the Kremlin. Too bad you can't join me. Yes. Comrade Blajot. Send him up. Send him up. And who is Comrade Blajot? Please, stay in your room. Someone you think you can trust. I make the decisions, Mr. Templar. Colonel Smolenko, to you. I think you misunderstand your position. Oh, you misunderstand yours, Comrade. As my secretary, you are supposed to supply me with facts about people I am to meet. Now, who is Blasio? Send it back to his room. You weren't listening, were you, when I said Klaus was hired by somebody who knew your program? He's head of our Paris organization. Does he know you by sight? No. Now, you'll let me handle this. Open the door. Do as he says. Colonel Smolenko, on behalf of us all, greetings, comrade. My secretary, Comrade Malagov, Igor, Ivan. The situation grows worse by the hour. Another of our men died yesterday in Liverpool, Put England. Put your briefcase think... in my bathroom. In the bathroom? It is off my bedroom, now. If the 
this is a trick. If it'll relieve you, why don't you go and sit in the bathroom with it? Coronel, I think it would be better. Silent. Ah. Comrade, tell me, who else in our organization knew the details of my trip to Paris? Myself and, of course, Claude Moliere. Ah, yes. I have read his file. Nobody else? Why, no. Your orders were top security. Good. Well, now I will need some communications equipment. I will arrange it. I will pick it up. Just tell me the name of the supplier. But you say you are familiar with his file. I read many files. <laughs> but Claude Moliere is assistant controller of the whole of the Southwest region. The Southwest region, comrade, is just a pimple on the map. My department covers a million square miles. I am sorry, Colonel. As you should be. So, Moliere supplies our equipment too. He does, yes. I will go and see him. I will give you his address. No, comrade. You will take us there. Now, get your coats. You get your briefcase. There are some papers you should see, Colonel. No, thank you, comrade. I would feel safer, a lot safer, if you were to bring it with you. Ivan, you wait here. Smolenko, what an honor. Please excuse the My mess. I never expected. Comrade Molokov. Oh, comrade. Here you go, comrade. 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 Uh, I'm afraid there is not room for us all to sit. It really doesn't matter. Comrade Blasio is leaving. Oh. But goodbye, comrade. I will see you tomorrow. Perhaps you will accept some refreshment, a most distinguished liqueur, which may be new to you. No, oh, thank you, comrade. We have business to discuss. Oh, of course. In Moscow, we uh, are struck. One might almost say shattered by the excellence of your miniaturized equipment. You make it yourself? Uh, no. Who does? Grossmeyer Cardin et Fils of Geneva. Grossmeyer Cardin et Fils, Geneva. Hmm. Tanya, what was that little thing we, uh, we liked so much? The uh, cigarette lighter that takes pictures. Oh, yes, of course. A most charming toy. Uh, here. Please accept one as a souvenir. Thank you, comrade. Most kind. Uh, there is a film in it? Yes, ten exposures. Yes. May I? Please. Smile, comrade. <laughs> Tanya. I will now collect some anti-capitalist propaganda. Igor. Get around the factory and let Malaya get away. I've uh, some other equipment I'd like you to see. Oh, yeah, comrade. When I have finished this roll. Oh. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. I wish to see the quality of the enlargement. Nine. What is happening? Don't worry, he won't get away. Igor is covering the back entrance. Igor? Igor. Igor is covering you, comrade. He was not born yet. You are. Get Ivan, and I don't care if it takes the rest of your life, you find Molière. Will you please tell me what is going on? I took nine pictures in there. This would have been the tenth. Do what he says. Find Molière. <sighs> Just as I thought. There is no such company as Grossmeyer, Cardin and Vies in Geneva or anywhere else. Seems you are right, Mr. Templer. Reactionary forces have penetrated our organization. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. They still may be in the pay of the British or the Americans. That is the uh, sum total of your thinking. 
You know, these people are far too smart for you. They're using tomorrow's methods, and you're still thinking about yesterday's cold potatoes. And now they know we are onto them. What do you think they will do? I know what I'd do. Have us killed before we can pass on what we know. <sighs> exactly. You have a suggestion. Yes, but why should I? You'd only waste it. I'm sorry. No, I deserved it. I trust you. Who is it? Parson for you, monsieur. Come in. I uh, did some shopping. You are most free with my expense account. Oh, I uh, paid for this personally. It's for you. For me? There we are. For what is this? Well, you put them on your feet. You make fun of me. Not at all. We're taking the night off. I'm going to show you Paris. Is it uh, all right? Miss Comrade, you are gorgeous. What did you do to your hair? I wash it. But you do have nightclubs in Moscow? Yes, of course, but I do not attend. I do not approve of frivolous social activity with no constructive aim in view. All right, then. What do you do for fun? At night, I mean. I improve my mind. I study, lectures, music, and I improve my body by exercise. Oh, what's the uh, address of your gymnasium? It's for women only. Even better. Tell me truthfully, doesn't all this make your heart beat just a little bit faster? Of course not. Well, you must have a heart. Somewhere. I knew it. Boom, 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 boom. You're not telling the truth. My heartbeat is always high. Paris has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it is my basic metabolism. The most beautiful metabolism in the world. I had the most beautiful evening. So did I. It's for you. I'll order some champagne. Room service, please.
Yeah, tight and light proof. The paper was a plastic explosive sensitized to go off on exposure to light and air. Look, stamp. Yeah, Swiss, postmark Nerve Montaigne. Well, you'd better pack your bag. We go to Switzerland? Where else? But you must have an industry of some sort. Yes, cheese. A cheese factory? Oh, no, just the farmers. We have no factory in Nerve Montaigne. I um, have a small radio which isn't working. Uh, could you get someone to fix it? No, I am sorry. Now I will arrange the lunch. You drag me all the way to Switzerland on a wild goose hunt. Chase, the uh, monastery we passed on the way in. So? I'm Father Anton. What can I do for you? Well, Father, we would uh, like some information. Yes? Is there a factory near here? A factory? Or a laboratory. The only place that I can think of of that description is here. <laughs> As you can hear, the Brotherhoods are at their devotions. So we may not go into the chapel. But the rest I'll gladly show you. This is the original building. It was built over 600 years ago. And it is here that the brothers are allowed for one day each year to break their vows of perpetual silence. Now, let me show you our factory. When I say factory, I'm of course joking. This is where we make and bottle our famous liqueur, which is named after our abbot founder, Abrouillac. Its recipe is a great secret. Yes, I, uh, I tasted it some time ago. May I offer you a glass? Thank you, Father. It rests gently on the tongue, never harsh or bitter. There's a mere suggestion of ginger. Don't break the glass. Your health, Father. Thank you. It is good. Delicious. Thank you. May I offer you and the young lady a bottle? Oh, thank you, Father. But you uh, must allow me to pay for it. Oh, no. A small contribution. Thank you. You're very generous. I see you've installed some of the modern amenities. Oh, yes. Uh, it's the fumes, you know. Without it, as in the old days, you've become quite drunk whilst we were working. Well, now, uh, let me show you our cells and the dining hall. Thank you so much, Father. You've been most kind. My pleasure. Go in peace, and God be with you. Do I, Father?
attorney of the Hastavir connection, Molly, offered us a glass of this in his shop in Paris. You think making the liqueur is a cover? I bet on it. Mm, you may be right. Well, if they don't make liqueur in that vault, what do they make? We go back to the monastery. I will go. I will come with you. There's no point in both of us getting into trouble. You let me snoop around on my own, see what I can find. It's ten now. If I'm not back by midnight, you turn up with the Swiss police. Simon! You take no unnecessary risks. Don't tell me you really care. Well, I shall be back soon for more of the same. Hello? One moment. It's for you, madame. Smolenko? Yes? Where are you? Not far. We get a message you leave in the hotel. And also one of the cigarette lighters from Molière. Before we kill him. We take it to the embassy. They find it contains a new and powerful micro-explosive for which we must have the formula. Oh, so we learn, Templar. He is working for the British Secret Service. He also is after this formula. Hold him until we arrive. He's at the monastery. Monastery? We have instructions to kill him. You hear, Smolenko? So that's why he was so eager to help. Don't worry, comrades. I will find Mr. Templar. <laughs> Deal with him at our leisure. Who's in there? What is happening out there? Report! There's a woman out here with shotgun. Capture her! Bring her in! Open up! Open the door! This is a hair trigger. If any of your men shoot, you die before I do. Now, take me below.
so. This is where you conduct your campaign against us. Yes or no? The answer would depend on who you are. Colonel Smolenko. You are to be congratulated, Colonel, both for your arrival and survival. Answer my question. Colonel, we conduct our campaign against you from many places. By setting the West and Russia at each other's throats? Let mad dogs destroy each other. Ultimately, we shall build the future. You, Colonel, will build nothing. You will spend the rest of your life in prison. Now, before I force you to destroy this place, give me the formula for the micro-explosives. Only that? But we have many other ingenious devices. Get it, or I shall kill you. found the way. You must be Mr. Templar. You find your surroundings interesting? Madly. I will explain what you have sacrificed your life to find. The proximity fuses used in the briefcases are kept in this refrigerator. Otherwise, the central heating system might set them off. The chemical elements of the micro-explosive. The miniaturization is done by highly skilled technicians. All kept completely secret from the village and the outside world. Take him through. Ah, oh, Colonel, always a pleasure to see you. Scream your head off. See you two. Maybe uh, this will make you change your mind. Not yet. Go down to the vault, get the formula, collect the documents and samples. It can't be done, Tanya. So you might as well have your apes get it over with now. What do you mean? No electricity. The movable walls are jammed solid. We will repair the cables. Oh, I'm afraid not. You see, without electricity, the refrigerators will have stopped. And the extractors, too. But not the central heating. They are wood fired. You do get the picture. It'll take us at least a couple of hours to mend those cables. By that time, the heat will have set off the proximity fuses and the rest of the explosives down there. So unless you want to uh, go up with it, we'll get out now. You did it on purpose. So that we should not get the formula. So that nobody would. You treacherous reactionary pig slime! You lied, you chicken! I will kill him. We will do it together. No, he is mine. Oh, please don't fight over me. With my own hands, I will fire the gun. Leave me, both of you. That is an order. Go, wait for me in the car. But, Colonel... Go! Turn your face to the wall. 
Goodbye, Mr. Templar. Can I have something, Tanya? You're a lousy shot. But quite a woman. I wish I could be. It is too late now. Is it? Goodbye, comrade.